Yes, welcome to the No State Project live from my YouTube channel here. No State Project. It is uh, January 4th, 2020. This is actually the second show uh, this first week in uh, January. Glad to be with everybody here as they start to file in over there. And um, uh, I did not get the Discord server. I, I will... I, I know it takes like four minutes to do. I a I, uh, lot on the plate this week. So I, especially today, not, so I will get that. But if you, we still have the uh, Skype, of course, which is Frank Rizzo 3. Instant message me first, then we can bring you up on the show. And of course, you can always call in. The regular call and number of somebody, if you could put that into the Skype chat, into the, the YouTube chat, I did not remember to do that again. Uh, it said 218-632-9399, 218-632-9399. The passcode is 2020 with the pound sign. And uh, I'll get the Discord thing next time. So we'll see how that works out. I, you know... Seems to be a lot more stable, but then again, I, I don't want to jinx anything because I've been doing okay recently with uh, without tech issues. Of course, I did have a disastrous time where right near the end of the show, <laughs> my computer locked up, which running Linux, that's not supposed to happen. But it did, so what do you do? But um, I'll do what I can. I I'll get that Discord server uh, set up for the next broadcast. And uh, thanks, everyone, uh, for the continued support of the show. If you'd like to be able to do that, of course, it's my website, markstevens.net. And you can also go to uh, my sales page, which is markstevens.sales.com. And if you're being attacked by one of them, their bureaucrats, uh, you want to learn how to more effectively defend yourself. And you can see evidence of that. And I've got, yes, I've, it's at markstevens.net on the success stories. And I just got... Uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, we got the very first success story for 2020. So I got to do what I can before the next show. I got to get that posted with the other ones. And uh, it was out of New York of all places, you know. Uh, but what I'm saying is so I, uh, uh, Art was able to take care of that. I will get the documentation posted. So thanks for that. And, uh, uh, yeah, so if you want to learn how to more effectively defend yourself, like Art and others have done that are posted at markstevens.net, then Government Indicted is a damn good place to start. That's the book, also available as an ebook, uh, a full model on how to effectively defend yourself more, you know, in, uh, in, in, um, basically code violations. I'm not talking about murder and stuff like that. That's a bit more sophisticated. We're talking about code violations where a government agent is saying that the laws apply to you because you're physically in Canada or the U.S., whatever place it is, and that you violated them. Uh, so go to markstevens.net for that information. Um, Want to get to the phones? I am going to be discussing. I do have a topic today, and I and um, you know because it's come up before, and people have asked, and I, I want to just dispel whatever kind of problems it might be. Uh, with that, we're talking about ethics, morality, and government. Does an ethical discussion have a place at the table when we're discussing or being attacked by bureaucrats? I, I look, it's a resounding yes from me. I don't think that there's any logical reason not to include that. Uh, I know I've I've had a couple of people that their heads, you know, uh, you know, explode when I, I mention that. But uh, it forms the basis of a proven, effective way of defending yourself. Basically, wiping the slate clean and not accepting any of the claims that are being made. That if the claim is being made, it's got to be proven. Got to be proven. So I'm going to get to the phones right away here. Yeah, someone's saying they're trying to call. I don't know if you're in the queue right now. Yeah, queue. Listen to that. A little uh, French to, to help the show along there. Uh, we have area code 986. You are live on the No State Project. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, you see, this isn't on my side. Hello? 
Yeah, you're live on the show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Thomas from Idaho. Tom from Idaho. What do you got for us today? Uh, I just have, uh, we've been talking on uh, email. I just have two questions. Uh, uh, and it's uh, concerning uh, how I would uh, go in. And because uh, I have pre-trial coming up and it would be how would I go in and uh, challenge their, the lack of discovery or lack of evidence in Discovery and Brady. Like, because I received a uh, notice for pretrial and they uh, listed a whole bunch of uh, requirements for the two parties, me and uh, the prosecutor. And uh, it was, uh, it mentioned discovery and how would I go in and, uh, you know, say, well, look, they didn't uh, meet, you know, their burden with uh, on prima facie. Have you filed a discovery request already? And the motion to dismiss? Yes. And what has the response been from the prosecution, if any? Uh, no, they did. They gave me discovery, but uh, when they did hand me that, uh, obviously I was like, well, what in here, you know, shows, and this was just to the prosecution, uh, what in this shows that the constitutional laws apply. Okay. And, uh, you know, I just got the, normal response of, well, of course it, uh, it applies. We don't have to prove that. It's not a burden of proof. Uh, and so this is my second pretrial because that was the first when I talked to the uh, prosecutor and now I have a second pretrial coming up. And you know for a fact it's a pretrial, not a trial? Yes, it's a pretrial because both the uh, on the I court Thing or whatever it's in their pre-trial and then a jury trial after that jury trial jeez or, yeah jury yeah. what can i ask uh what 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 are they charging you with uh it's a uh marijuana uh possession marijuana possession and a jury trial so is this a misdemeanor or is this just or is this a felony misdemeanor wow okay do you know yeah. that the prosecutor is looking for jail time uh i have no idea no they haven't said i would no i i wouldn't assume like idaho is usually it leans towards probation from what i've seen uh, of course, Idaho would be behind places like California. Now we have Illinois. Illinois has decriminalized it and uh, reported on the show on Wednesday that 11,000 low-level you know, low level marijuana charges like this, that people have been pardoned and they're, they're purging the wreckage, which is nice. But not Idaho. Not Idaho. Just clinging tight to that Republican nonsense that uh, you should tell people uh, that they can't... <laughs> Idaho or Utah may be the last two states to hold out and not legalize or decriminalize marijuana. Yeah, probably. But well, yeah, I was just like, oh, and Lynn, the other question is how do I check if they assign me a defense attorney? How would I check? Because it, that would be on the uh, I court's record where it says assigned attorneys, correct? It, it should be if there's an attorney of record. Should be. Uh, well, you, you should you well that that should be done you know in person, uh, and so that you can object to that if you want to do that. Well, let's address the first one. Uh, I would actually okay. go into the pretrial with a motion in limine filed, and also also a motion uh, to dismiss for prosecutorial misconduct because you've now can use, and I'm sure I mentioned this in the email. You can use that statement from the prosecutor that they don't have to prove their own claim. And mm -hmm. it, it's, it's right there. They, they said it to you and, uh, and you know, Hey, they might be like Tiffany Castillo. They may, they may reverse that in court. So well, no, 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 no. We know we have to prove that, but we, we have the evidence in you know, in the record, you know, they might change. You know, that's one thing, uh, you know, prosecutors have done before. So here they may be loudly proclaiming and, and being arrogant, 
uh, like a few other lawyers that, you know, outside of court saying, well, we don't have to prove that. But boy, once you get them in court, a lot of times that that tune changes. So I would I would go in with those two motions already filed that if they're going to openly admit that they don't have to prove their claim, they shouldn't be allowed to argue it. Yeah, you uh, we've been talking on an email and you've already sent me those and I have those filled out. I'm going to send a uh, submit them Monday to the uh, clerk and the prosecutor. What day is the pretrial? The pretrial is the 13th of uh, January this month. Okay, so it's next Monday. And then the jury trial, yeah, and the jury trial is the 24th of this month. Okay, well, let's deal with the, this one at a time. Uh, so to answer mm -hmm. the question, how I would address that, I would, if they say I'm ready, you know, are you ready to proceed, which it, 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 it usually pretrial is just, in, you know, with you and the prosecutor, but if, if it is with the judge... And I would say, well, we have uh, two motions pending that need to be addressed. And if, if the judge asks me anything, I said, well, look, I just want, you know, the, the prosecutor has openly admitted that they do not have to prove their foundational claim. They believe that the laws apply because I'm physically in Idaho, but they, 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 uh, they told me already in pretrial that they don't have to actually prove that. And there's nothing in the discovery, to, to, you know, to, you know, to, to contradict that. They are not providing the evidence and you, you need a ruling on those motions. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that specifically like, so when, how would I show that in discovery? Like there's nothing in it. Like you just go through it. You just bring, you know, the discovery the prosecutor gave me and you just go through it and show that there's nothing here that, you know, shows evidence that just because I'm physically in Idaho, that, the code's applicable? Well, you don't even necessarily have to, because what you're bringing out is, like I mentioned, you want to bring out what they've said and, and quote it, mm -hmm. you know, that, that section, in, you know, from the, uh, from, the mo from the motions. That the prosecutor as, knows that this is their foundational claim on jurisdiction, personal, and subject matter. They know that, they admit it, but they told me directly they don't have to prove it. And and that is obviously reflected in in the lack of evidence in the discovery. Why would they provide just between us? You know, it, 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 why would they provide something that they're telling you we don't have to prove it? So that's I would just limit it to that. Look, they've told me they don't have to prove their foundational claim. I think otherwise. Yeah. And of course, you know how yeah. I, I would respond if the judge said, or if, the, if they said something, where, you know, if the judge was inclined to, but well, well uh, objection. Am I going to be uh, permitted to make a foundational defense claim against the prosecution without having to prove it? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, well, number two. It's just. Right. Oh, yeah. The, the defense uh, attorney. Two was a, a uh, why, attorney, yeah. Are, have they brought this up before? Is that why you're concerned that they may force an attorney on you? No, no the only reason I'm worried is because I just received uh, the notice for a uh, trial setting, pre-trial conference. And when I looked in the back at certificate of service, they said state attorney, defense attorney, and then me, defendant. And, uh, I don't know why there's a defense attorney that mailed it to, but yeah, they never mentioned it on the in person or when I checked the I court's record. The only assigned attorney is the prosecutor. Okay, the so city prosecutor is, on this document, is there a name and address given by defense defense attorney? No, it's probably and just neither the form for the uh, city prosecutor. Yeah, it's probably just the form that they have, and so because they're you know. It, it, Okay. That to me, I think, is the simplest explanation. That's probably, uh, you know, accurate. It's just the form that they use that they typically ninety nine percent of the time are sending it to defense counsel. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, I think that uh, answers my question. All right. Appreciate the call. And uh, hey, uh, if you need, uh, we're going to do what we can. Uh, at least get into the Skype chat, and they can get you into Discord. I'll set up my own, but I, I want to start when I'm able at least once a week to, to start helping more again, like we used to is doing the role playing. So uh, whether you do with me or, or the, some guys in, in the, the discord, 
uh, definitely do some role playing so that when you confront this prosecutor again, you know, you can you can really back them up against the wall and maybe get a pretty good admission uh, in court that may actually sway the judge to do the right thing. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. All right, cool. Well, I appreciate the call. All right, Tom. Well, thank you. Yep. yep. You're welcome. Uh, Tom in Idaho. Yeah. The, um, the role playing definitely helps. You want to be able to engage with other people that, that uh, have been there before and can uh, throw you some questions so that, when you do go in, not only do you understand the basics, but it, nothing's new. You, you've heard it before. And, and I'll you know, I tell you, um, there's not that many different responses that we get from them. It's not like there's, you know, like some, well, there, there, there could be a hundred different things that I have to respond to. Typically, no. It's the same rehash things. I mean, here we've got the lawyer in Idaho, the prosecutor say, ah, I don't want to prove that. I don't have to prove that. And, 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 and so let me give the number out again. Uh, if you want to join the call, uh, the show here, uh, 218-632-9399, 218-632-9399. And uh, the passcode is 2020 with the pound sign. And then you can also get me on Skype, uh, Frank Rizzo 3. And uh, th- this, this gets to, you know, the, the, the tentative title for the show today is ethics, morality, and government. Does an ethical discussion, do ethical objections, do they have a seat at the table in a discussion about government and government actions and operations and, and court procedure? And, and, and you know, one of the things I, I think they do, I think a, a sound defense is wiping the slate clean, not accepting any claims as true unless they're proven. Prove every damn thing. Look, this is your life on the line when they're attacking you in court. Make them prove every single point. Obviously, there's going to be more points that, that, that are more important. Yeah. And those are the ones you focus on first. But, you, you, you know, and then if you get through those, you have your ones that are not as important, but still may be relevant to be addressed. But if you look at there is an lawyers who are officers and counsels of the court have to accept to be members of the bar. They have to accept an ethical code. Just like judges, there's a canon, the canons of judicial ethics, and it, you have the same type of ethical rules uh, for lawyers. And I think it's wrong I think it's wrong to just accept what some what other people say and not challenge it. The idea that we, you know, you we shouldn't challenge that because someone says, "Oh, you, you know, you 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 can't do that." Uh, well, obviously you can, and I think what we should. So, I talk about being a skeptic and going in there. And again, this goes for whatever I say. Also, I've said ever since you know, I've said a thousand times. Don't just I'm not. I've never wanted anyone to just accept what I said is true. Probe it, question it, challenge it. If I say that X is Y, then I should be able to verify that. And if I can't, I I have to either be ethical and honest and admit that I was wrong, or Go the other way, like some, like most, uh, especially some so-called or, or self-professed anarchists, do the dishonest thing for clicks. Do the dishonest thing and say whatever needs to be said just to get traffic, just to get people and to, you know, to, to, to give them money. So we wipe the slate clean and look at it as a skeptic. It is not true unless it's proven. And, and if somebody says, well... I'm only going to prove up to this point. You have to accept it from this point. If we, if you try to look beyond this line I draw, then I'm not going to allow it. I, that, that to me doesn't seem like it's honest. And it, it doesn't help. And I don't think it's a defense to say, well, that, 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 that you, you, you can't challenge it. Why? Well, because the ones who make the rules don't want you to do that. They don't allow it. I say, that's ridiculous. 
if I was to get on the radio here or the show on YouTube or do another radio show, and I was to say, I'm going to make certain claims, and I will only accept the challenge up to this point that I draw. My foundation that is behind that line, you can't ask me about. You can either shoot me or you can vote me off the show. It's either a bullet or a ballot. You cannot challenge me beyond that. You're not allowed. I don't, I, I will not allow it. This is the way it is because Mark Stevens says so, and you will not challenge me behind. I'll take a challenge right up to that line. But any challenges beyond that, I will not allow. You have to accept it as true. You either shoot me or vote me off the show. Those are your options. You have to accept that what I'm saying is true to that point. And come on. Come on. Give me a break. Does it, now, and that's supposed to be accepted. Well, he's the one making the rule. He's the one imposing it here. Uh, I guess we have to accept it. We have to, have to kill him or we, we have to get rid of him somehow. But we can't challenge that assertion at all. <laughs> Please. Oh, oy vey. it reminds me that the, the divine right of kings. Well, if you tangle with me, you're tangling with God. So, you know, that's, you know, and, and remember, the king can do no wrong. Well, who said that? Anytime we have a situation where somebody is saying, you can only challenge me to this point, you're dealing with someone who's dishonest. And it's not because you may not have the same education as them. It's because they're being dishonest. Those who make a claim bear the burden of proving it's true. You don't get to set an arbitrary line. No, 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 I'm not going to go beyond that. Could you imagine that in a medical setting? Can you imagine that in any kind of scientific endeavor? Psychology, whatever you want to say. You can challenge us to this line and nothing else. So what you're saying is the foundation of your claim that... That without that foundation, your claim falls completely flat. You're saying that, that the foundation I can't challenge. Nope. Can't do it. Not going to allow it. Well, you're dealing with a crook. You're dealing with somebody who's dishonest. You don't see an, an astrophysicist saying you can challenge th this, this theory up to this point, but you can't go beyond it. You have to shoot me. If you, if you don't accept it, shoot me or somehow get me out of this position. But while I'm here making the assertion, you have to accept it. Ah, oh, come on. Come on. I'm not, we're not five years old. Again, and this has been used against me and, and, and it's just as valid against me. Something is not true just because I say it. And something is not true just because you say it. Or it's, it's not true just because someone with a robe on says it. If you're starting your analysis from an assumption if, 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 if that cannot be challenged, you're not on a logical base. It's not a logical basis. It's not rational. And the idea, like if we extend this to court, that you can somehow prove something beyond the reasonable doubt, starting with a literally with an assumption. I, I, I don't get it. I, I, I don't get it. And, and I'll throw this out. Guys, don't feed trolls. You don't. You, you, <laughs> I'm doing my best here, too. Don't feed trolls. Just ignore. Set to ignore. So uh, I'll discuss this more because I want to bring it again into the area uh, of government. And 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 show how this arbitrary line is there for a reason. Uh, th the reason is because if you go beyond that. They can't make their case, and they are they they are just going to be standing there as the crooks that they are. And that's the thing: any discussion on government and whether their operations, whether their core procedures, any discussion of that has got to start off with first an analysis and and, and some agreement as to whether they are a legitimate moral or ethical organization. And I've and I know that that some people don't want to talk about that. But again, we do not judge the Chinese government 
and 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 their the concentration camps and and selling uh, body parts, you know, organs, forced organ donation. We're not going to judge that based on the Chinese government's rules, because according to their rules, they're perfectly legitimate. And so either you shoot them or you vote them out of office. I don't accept that. We can still make a moral judgment on that and move to try to change that. So let's get to the calls. We'll get back to the ethical discussion. When we got, uh, is this, uh, I'm stunned. Was that in the, uh, Wyoming, maybe? We got area code 407. You're live on the No State Project. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Marcus, uh, Patriot One. Uh, good to Good to see you alive and well this new year. Um, I wanted to ask uh, concerning the IRS that when, when you ask them uh, what facts they rely on to prove their code applies, <clears throat> is that after <clears throat> someone has filed a return or, or if someone's just being attacked without a return? Okay. Well, obviously, it's easier. They they have a little less to go on if you've never filed a return. But uh, what I'm a little unclear on what your question is. Say it, repeat it. Um. Well, if someone's filed a return, wouldn't that eliminate the ability to even ask the question at all? Uh, well, let me ask you uh, before. I mean, I'll answer that. I I don't think it does, and we've had many many times where people have filed returns and we've we've had the assessments uh or the you know the form letters uh drop we've had it uh, you know drop uh is the return voluntary or compulsory uh well they say it's voluntary but uh they treat it as it's compulsory well if you don't file the return uh is there a threat memorialized in their code that it's a crime that you can be prosecuted and imprisoned for? It seems so, because uh, they're still coming after me for 2009. Gee, well, well, it, it's not that it seems so. It is. We know that <laughs> 7204, whatever the statute is, I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, as far as I'm aware, fail, willful failure to file and tax evasion, uh, not paying not filing return and not paying taxes is cons- is a is is a crime on their sacred books and people are prosecuted for it all the time so it's it's not it is compulsory you either do it or you can go to prison uh, it doesn't matter whether they carry the threat out or not the threat is all that's necessary to show that it's not voluntary so what i like to do look i like using a socratic method i like just asking questions and uh so I've asked them straight out and this happened with our friend Bill in New Hampshire where uh, I think the agent's name was Ray and it was a tax case, even though it wasn't income taxes, it was a business tax. And he was insisting that the fact now he already agreed that their foundational claim was he's physically in New Hampshire. The laws apply and, you know, and that's jurisdiction. Blah, you know, they, okay, we, we already we already had that. So he was so when he couldn't answer that what facts proved that their constitution, which he just said applied, it was his claim. <laughs> okay, this isn't theoretical. We're talking the actual agent, and I have pictures of him in the the video I did uh, a, a number of years ago. Anyway, so uh, I uh, he said that the only thing he he had needed as evidence now he, uh, evidence was the uh, the tax permit, which of course is compulsory like a return. And I said, okay, so if Bill, if, if Bill didn't have the tax permit, you'd have no jurisdiction at all to even look at him, right? He says, well, no, no, we'd still have jurisdiction. Oh, so you would agree then that whether he has a tax permit or not is completely irrelevant to your assertion of jurisdiction. And he had to agree. And we've had, I've had IRS agents admit the same thing. Whether you file the return or not is irrelevant to their claim of jurisdiction. That's uh, if you ask them the the right questions, not magical, but if you ask them logical questions, they will admit that to you. Well, have you had uh, any experience uh, with uh, piling on of uh, 
uh, frivolous uh, penalties. Yeah. Because, like, if you respond to them in writing, they'll, they'll just say, uh, oh, that's frivolous, and they'll just start piling on frivolous penalties when all you did was really ask a question. Yeah, and it, these are tough. So what I generally do in my responses to them, since we know that they're going to send you a form letter. Now, I, I don't, you know, we know there's not a human being necessarily typing the, or they're form letters. Now, that might be a human being that hits a, a, a button for a particular form to come out. So knowing they're always going to be screaming frivolous from the rooftops, I put in there a, a statement that this is a question of fact, not a question of law. This is a question of fact based. OK, you're making a legal claim. I'm asking for the facts. You don't seem to have them as a issue of fact based on your own testimony. It's not a frivolous argument because frivolous arguments are always issues of law, legal interpretation. It's like what the law requires, what the law says, not a matter of it's not that they're making a claim. I asked them for the facts. They couldn't respond or they didn't, you know, or they say, well, we don't need to do that. So any claim that my position is a frivolous argument is a false statement through the mail and a complaint will be sent to TIGDA, you know, the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration. That's how I address it. It doesn't necessarily stop it, and, and there's no guarantee that anything we do is going to stop them, but it does seem to help. So if uh, someone was to say, say, um, well, Section 3402 doesn't apply to me, that could be a frivolous claim. But if you were to ask what facts do you rely on that prove Section 3402 applies, that's a question of fact. Am I uh, it's a better one. What I what I prefer to do is get their admission first on the record. You, We've got to know what their claim is, not what some idiot may say on the Internet. So, you know, it doesn't matter if, I, you know, some schmuck like me says it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. The only thing that is relevant in that situation is what is the IRS claiming? Okay, it doesn't matter what their attorneys may claim later. It doesn't matter what some lawyer on the Internet says. It doesn't matter what I say. What is the agent on your case? What are they claiming? And they will tell you every time that because you're in Wisconsin or wherever, the laws, the constitutional laws apply and give them jurisdiction. Remember, when you're talking about the IRS, you're not talking about a traffic court. You're talking about people who are claiming directly from the Constitution, not a statute. They're claiming the Constitution in, art, in, the, in the 16th Amendment. OK, so let's leave out these stupid other arguments. They're literally relying on the Constitution. They'll tell you that. Then you just ask him, what facts do you rely on to prove that your constitution, a written instrument, applies to me just because I'm physically in Wisconsin or receive money in Wisconsin? They will then tell you they don't have any such evidence and can't answer the question. So that, so my position is, I asked them for their position. They told me what it was. I asked them for facts to prove it, and they don't have any. So I'm not pointing to Section 3402. I go to the foundation of their claim. And so that is not a frivolous argument because a frivolous argument is is wrong. First of all, it has no merit. So what part of what I just laid out would be false? Is it false that they admitted that that was their claim? Is it false that I asked them for facts? Is it false when they, they said that it was an assumption? See, it's not frivolous because it's not inaccurate. It's not wrong. This is what I've wrote, written about so many times ago. That page. What people don't like about it and it's like the agent, the, the uh, administrative law judge in California. They don't like the fact that you're making the challenge in the first place. That is where people like trolls. That is where the issue comes in. They don't like that you're making that challenge. So they erect this whole argument to try to discredit it. The, the technique where they're asking the question. Yeah, they'll call it frivolous. I went, yeah. One time I wrote. Re responded to a, a letter and I asked the, the agent, when you use the term we, us, and our, actually what do you mean? And I got a response back. She wrote, when I use we, us, and our, I mean me. And then I never heard from her again. But, 
Wow. Well, yeah, that's, I'm glad it worked out that way. But when, when I am confronted with an agent that, and I don't mean a lawyer on the web, on, 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 the, on, on the show or, you know, on the internet. I'm talking about an actual agent for the IRS or a taxing agency. And this is something I would recommend everyone do. When you've laid your facts out and they come back and say it's frivolous, Ask them what part of it is inaccurate factually. What set of facts is wrong? They won't be able to tell you because it always comes down to, I don't like you challenging this legal claim. They've got nothing but guns. Prisons. They don't like you making that challenge. That's something I had to defend the last few months. They don't like you making the challenge. That's why I said there's a certain line that they draw, and you can't go beyond it. So even if they make the claim, the Constitution applies to you. That's the basis of my jurisdiction. You can't challenge it because they say it's not within the court's jurisdiction to hear it. It's only within the court's jurisdiction to hear the, the claim, not the challenge to the claim. Go figure the logic on that one. Uh, they are mind blowing. <laughs> Thank you for letting me in. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, it's the idea that, well, we can hear the claim made, but we cannot allow you to challenge it. That's for a different branch of government to hear. <laughs> Give me a, we, can, we can only hear the claim. We can't hear the challenge. And you, you, you got to shoot the legislature dead or vote them out. <laughs> Play. No one's advocating shooting. We don't, we don't shooting. have to prove our side. Yeah, we don't have to prove our accusation. You just got to prove that. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, no you, one's advocating. You got to prove you're innocent. Yeah, no one's advocating shooting the legislature. I think that's just a stupid thing about it. It's a, the whole thing about you. You got a choice. It's the bullet or the ballot. You either shoot the government dead or you vote them out. But either way, the laws apply. Doesn't matter if you don't. Where's the evidence? Well, we don't have to show evidence because that's a political question. Yeah, but you're saying it in court. <laughs> it's just, it's it's it just. Yeah. This is why there's only a handful of people that consistently cr criticize my work because most people are. Whoa, you, you got a, you, you got a point there. Yeah, thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate the call, Patriot Wonder. Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, logical consistency. That's that's what we would like to see. So it's uh, January 4th, 2020. If you want to join the show, it's 218-632-9399. The passcode is 2020 with the pound sign. And you can also get me on Skype if you instant message me first at Frank Rizzo 3 And... Uh, and I'm sorry, you know, it, it unfortunately came up and it probably will continue. But there are new people listening and, and following the show. So, uh, I, I, you know, I don't want anyone to be misled. And, and no, I'm not advocating violence. I'm just repeating the argument that I don't agree with. There's an argument that uh, if you disagree, it says the laws apply end of discussion because the legislature said so. The only way to change that is by the bullet or the ballot. So somebody else is advocating a, you know, so I'm not advocating that anybody pick up a gun and shoot a government agent unless it's in self-defense. But I'm still, <laughs> it's got to be pretty clear cut. I'm not saying go shoot the legislature so that you can say, oh, the law, now, now the legislature's dead. Now I can, now there is no evidence the laws apply because they're all dead and can't say that they do apply. I just think it's a stupid, stupid argument. I talk about ethics and, and, and treating others the way you want to be treated. And, and at the whole basis of my defense when I go against these people is ethics. It's morality. It's a sense of right and wrong. And that it's wrong to force people to in your community to give you money even under the guise of doing good things for them. It's wrong. Which is why we can say beyond any reasonable doubt whatsoever, those who call themselves government, not just the ones in China, or Saudi Arabia, where it's obvious to everyone that they're criminals. But even in Canada, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, the United States, Mexico, if you force people in your community to give you money, even under the guise that you're, good, you're a good guy and you're doing it on their behalf, it's still wrong. 
It is still wrong. So back to the ethics of this. That ties in. That goes. That's 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 the basis. Why are we able to go in? And I mean, me and and uh, others uh, like Tom in Idaho, and Art in New York, who got the the most recent success story out of New York. But um, we're able to go in and do that because the foundation is one of logic and ethics. That it is wrong. To do that, it's not fair to force people through these proceedings without any evidence. It's not fair. Well, you can't argue philosophy. You can't argue morality. It's not fair, even from a legal standpoint, because the Supreme Court, as I've mentioned before, an international shoe. If it if the the taking of jurisdiction may not offend traditional notions of fair play and substantial justice. Now, when the Supreme Court is saying uh, uh, traditional notions of fair play and substantial justice, they're not talking about excluding every principle of right and wrong. There, they're talking in a broad sense if it's fair or not fair. And, one, and, and how do we determine whether something's fair? Well, let's use the foundational claim of the prosecutor to draw a damn line and say, you can't look behind that. And that you can, yes, you can challenge the assertion, but not in this way. That's not fair because you don't allow the defense to do it. So if the prosecution gets to do it, the defense must be able to do that. So I should be able to erect a legal claim against the prosecution and draw a line that they can't go beyond. That unless they have proof contrary up to that point, they can't challenge it. That's not going to be allowed, nor should it. It's a matter of fundamental fairness. Traditional notions of fair play and substantial justice. It says equal protection under the law, bull. Because there's no way in the world I'm going to be able, you or, or, or me, there's no way in the world that you and I are going to pull someone up to testify on our behalf against the prosecution and not have a showing of personal knowledge. But they let allow the cops to do that all the time. So we can we can hear them couch it in all these terms. It still comes down to this. No matter what you want to paint, the claim the prosecutor is making. If the claim is being used against you, you have to be able to challenge it. And if you're not allowed to challenge it, because it's up to a different branch, then it's not fair. That violates, in, in my eyes, traditional notions of fair play and substantial justice. And we shouldn't accept, we shouldn't accept that the prosecutor can make claims, political philosophy or otherwise, whatever the hell you want to call it, that they can make these claims against you and then cry philosophy when you challenge it. Not one single time, not once, has any judge, prosecutor, or cop ever in court tried to say that is a philosophical question or that is a, a political question that the court can't hear. Every time when we asked that police officer for the facts his legal claim was based on, the facts... The prosecutor comes back and says, objection calls for a legal conclusion. They don't come back and say, objection calls for a political conclusion. See, it's the difference between real court and that coffee house crap. I forget the actual term. Or when you're just pounding away on, on uh, uh, a YouTube chat. So... 
wanted to just get some of the tenets of secular ethics. And I've made very clear on the show, and I disagree, and we had some disagreement going on with somebody on the, the markstevens.net, which, yes, I did get the HTTPS for markstevens.net. I, I, I always had it, but I didn't, I didn't flip the switch. And so there was a discussion, and I think the guy is dead wrong, and I've explained why many times, the idea that you have to be uh, believe in the supernatural in order to have a, a uh, uh, principles of, of ethics or logic. I think this is absolutely false, and I've explained it's through empathy. So uh, I just want to go through a little more here regarding that. And... Um, Keep in mind how people call government operate and see if it, you know, if, if it's at all consistent with uh, any real rational system of ethics. Human beings, through their ability to empathize, are capable of determining ethical grounds. The well-being of others is central to ethical decision making. Right in the midst of uh, another war being launched in the Middle East or just the extension of existing wars. Human beings, through logic and reason, are capable of deriving normative principles of behavior. Logic and reason. So the idea that you can just make immune from challenge a, 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 your claim, my claim, I'm just going to say it's, uh, it's X, Y, Z. And because of that, you can't challenge it. <laughs> Come on, give me a break. Through logic and reason, if you are, if, if you make the claim, you bear the burden. That's where it ends. This idea, well, I'm just going to call it X, Y, Z, and ha, ah, you can't challenge it. No, LOL. This may lead to a behavior preferable to that propagated or condoned based on religious text. Alternatively. This may lead to the advocacy of a system of moral principles that a broad group of people, both religious and non-religious, can agree upon. Human beings have the moral responsibility to ensure that societies and individuals act based on these ethical principles. Society should, if at all possible, advance from a less ethical and just form to a more ethical and just form. And, and, and this may lead, I like this one, this may lead to a behavior preferable to that propagated or condoned based on religious text. Well, you don't have to go any further in Saudi Arabia to see that rational secular ethics are far preferable as a ethical standard and moral code than religious text. Stoning people, and you can look at, at Judaism also. It's right there in the Old Testament. Some of the most horrific things that you can do to people. It was okay to stone somebody for working on Saturday. The Shabbat. That was ethical. It was, it was ethical in the Bible and in other religious texts to own people as property. You, you got to throw Aristotle into the mix there. He wasn't necessarily religious. But he, you know, he he thought it was just a natural way for things. It was it was okay. It was moral. It was it was good. It was the way things were. I disagree. So you can go through. There's an awful lot of uh, things in religious texts that, as as a so-called moral code, that are that are what I believe morally reprehensible. Actually, stoning someone to death because they 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 did some work on on Saturday. What what? No, that's not a that, that's not a moral code. So if we measure what government does by basic principles of right and wrong, the, you know, the, 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 to do one to others, that's something that se rational secular ethics shares with religious texts is, is to treat others the way you want to be treated. No supernatural influence necessary. So if we measure government actions by that, the, okay, to, to do one to others the way you want, okay, then you can see that government is, is, is deeply, deeply unethical and immoral. So regardless of lawyers swearing an oath to be ethical, the fact is that 
the organization itself, the way it operates, the way it is kept in place is deeply immoral and criminal. And so we have to look at that and it cannot be ignored when we're going to look at their rules and we're going to look at their actions. If we're going to have any kind of rational analysis on the court proceedings, for example, you cannot exclude that from the equation. It, it is not rational. And you can go LOL and you can laugh. Ha, 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 ha. But people, serious mm -hmm. people who are interested in, a, in a, an adult discussion won't necessarily do that. If somebody can provide, I, I dropped the call line anyway, maybe here. You have a, I'd lost my, uh, but if there's a challenge to, so, you just call the show too. And, uh, well, do it here. Uh, someone, a foreign source saying, so morals can be changed. Well, I think morals do change. I think the basis doesn't that, it, 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 of one of empathy. What doesn't change is that to be morally consistent in our ethics, we have to apply the fact that we don't want to get hurt, Right. I think that's pretty, that unless someone is deeply disturbed, we naturally, we avoid pain. We avoid, and to be logically consistent, that moral code has to be consistent with that, that we don't cause harm to other people. So there may be some minor changes, but really, I, I wouldn't think that a, a rational ethical code doesn't really change that much. So, yeah, uh, Unless there's an uh, there's an argument, yeah, you know, in you know, I like to hear it, you know, but uh, I don't um, I don't know if we're going to necessarily get one of those here in the in the chat. Uh, morals are just rules, yeah, but remember that there is a uh, you know, without even a moral code, just if we're you know, just looking at brutes, I have a right to self, def you know, not a right, but it's it, it, it there's a, a, you know a hardwired. Uh, uh, instinct again you know to to defend and preserve my own life so somebody may say well i don't accept your moral code well okay but i'm still gonna i still it's still right for me to defend myself so uh, i would say because self-defense is always morally justified that that's a big a big part of it but you know it, it, if there's an argument a rational argument as to why somebody can make a claim against me in court and, and, and nothing is relevant without it. And that I can't challenge that individual making that claim. I, I'd like to, because, you know, the, I don't accept as rational, this, 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 this line. If you, you know, I, 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 I look more at, at ethics and, and rational behavior and ideas, you know, and, and, um, I think the tried and true, he who makes the claim bears the burden of proof. It doesn't say, and we didn't get a man on the moon. We don't have rockets. We don't have all the advances that we have. We don't have that because it, it was, well, he who makes the claim bears the burden only to a certain point that they decide. And if someone thinks that government is a rational ethical organization it's moral present your evidence present the argument so anybody who wants to challenge what i'm doing at least try to form a rational argument with counter evidence to what i've presented actually address whether or not government is a legitimate organization because the reason why critics don't do that is because it the conclusion is ines, inescapable because if you do if you do admit that government as constituted is a criminal organization then that really tends to taint your defense of those proceedings so of course someone's not they're not going to want to do that that's why I, when i did that 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 40 minute call he never addressed whether they were a legitimate organization or not 
we want to discuss whether uh, the Chinese government is violating human rights. Well, I'm not going to discuss that because I'm not going to get into a philosophy argument. I'm only going to go by what the Chinese government does, with what they say. We have to go by the Chinese government's rules. If you're going to, dis- you can't discuss human rights in Saudi Arabia because it's all legal. You can't discuss it. Yes, because they uh, they abolished uh, so much, and <laughs> so many bad things were were abolished because they just waited for government, like with the drug war, they just waited for government to turn around and change the policy. So, but uh, I to this day have been putting the challenge out to come on the show to have a rational to present a rational argument with evidence counter evidence to what i presented to show that contrary to my argument and evidence government actually is a legitimate moral organization but of course they don't do that they don't because it makes defending their actions and trying to it, it's like what i guess what it comes down to is that if you admit the facts that it's a criminal organization then how can you argue that their proceedings are fair how can you then argue that the lines that they drawn are rational and we shouldn't cross them we shouldn't disregard them Oh, when you're in the fight for your life, uh, you either shoot the legislature or or, or vote them out, but you got no other choice. I'm going to take door number three, and I'm going to challenge the claims that they're actually making. And uh, we've done pretty well with that. Of course, doesn't mean we get everything tossed out, but we get a fair amount. It is a more effective way of, uh, of challenging, and it's been proven. So that's it for today. I appreciate everyone tuning in to the big show today. Uh, I'll get my No Stay Project Discord server for Wednesday, and maybe we can start taking calls there. Uh, we'll see how that works out. But, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll give that a shot. But I appreciate everyone supporting the show. It's uh, markstevens.net and markstevens.sales.com if you'd like to help support the show. And, uh, again, I'll be live on Wednesday. And so, till then, salud.